Hi everybody, it's time for Sunday School. Um, we replayed an old one last week, so I haven't talked to you guys directly for a couple of weeks. Um, I was really busy the last couple of weeks. I've been working at my mom and dad's house and cleaning things out. They are living in an apartment in Bridgeport now, and um, we needed to get their house ready um, to either sell or rent, and right now, our friends um, Val and Catherine and Nora Ray are renting from us and they're living in that beautiful home and they're living in Morgantown so they're not here in Buchanan but they're gonna be at church with us and that's really good. So cleaning mom and dad's house has been a really long process and hard. Lots of things that I had to get done. Um, so it was good that I was able to take last week off for Sunday school, but I missed you all very much. <clears throat> Today, um, we're going to talk about Matthew chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. And it's about loving God and loving our neighbor. And I thought it was really appropriate that um, I had this lesson for us in light of the fact that I've been working at my parents' house because that's been a real act of love for me because I love my parents so much um, and they weren't able to really work on their own home the last few um, years. And so it was important for me to be able to do that for them. So let's, uh, let's read our passage in Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. It says this, But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked a question to test him. Now they're testing Jesus. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And he said to them, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So, you know, sometimes people argue over rules. And we're in an election season right now, and there's a lot of people that are talking about the way things should be governed and what rules should we, we should follow and what laws we should pass. And, well, sometimes those rules um, kind of get in the way of being kind to each other. You know, rules are important. If you're playing a game with your brother or sister and you don't have a set of rules, things can get a little chaotic sometimes. Um, but I hope that you don't get upset with each other if someone's not following the rules. I hope you just talk to each other about it and can move forward. You know, sometimes people get pretty upset with others if they disagree or don't agree with what they think is the right thing to do or the right thing to say. Um, you know, sometimes we know people don't follow the rules and sometimes we know people make mistakes. What do you think might be the most important rule for us? Well, if we looked at the laws of our government, it would be hard to say which one is the most important rule. But the lesson that we read today from the scriptures from Matthew really tells us in Jesus' words what the most important rule is. Remember, the Pharisees were really good at trying to catch Jesus in a wrong statement or trying to stump him, giving him a question a bit that he really couldn't answer. <clears throat> they came and asked him what the most important commandment was. And, and so, you know, out of those 10 commandments that we know, um, or that we've learned about. Those 10 commandments were a big deal for the Pharisees and for the Jews. But they had more laws on top of that. There were so many, I think there were more than 600, um, hundreds of specific rules about how to live their lives and um, how they were supposed to live every day. And they wanted to know which one Jesus thought was the most important. Um, and they were trying to get him to mess up, certainly. And as always, Jesus was too smart to fall for a trap. He basically narrowed it down to two things. 
love God and love your neighbor. There's a great song out right now. I think Danny Gokey sings it and it's called Love God, Love People. And that's really the bottom line. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love others. Jesus said that the number one rule was to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. And that means that everything that we do, everything that we say, everything that we think, we should do with God in mind. He's the most important thing. But Jesus also said we should love our neighbor as ourselves. And so that's not just the person who is your neighbor that lives next door. Um, that's all of the people that we come into contact with, even the people that we don't disagree, that we don't agree with. Somebody that might not follow the rules or somebody that might not believe the same way we do. <clears throat> Jesus said when we do those things, when we love God, and we love others, then everything else comes into place. The other laws all hang on love. And if we truly love God first and foremost, then we will want to follow all of his other commandments too. Now, that's not easy, I know. It's not easy for me. Sometimes people are hard to love. And I'm going to tell on myself a little bit and and uh, tell you, I have two sisters, and you all, lots of you probably know that. Um, I love my sisters with all of my heart. They are wonderful people, and I'm so proud of both of them. But my middle sister and I, I think probably we're just too close in age, but we didn't get along for a long time. And um, I said many times that she was hard to love. And I'm sure that she has said that I'm hard to love. Um, we used to say unkind things to each other. We would argue about things. Um, if she was rude to me, I was rude back to her. If I was rude to her, she was rude back to me. Now those are things that are a little bit hard to admit to you all. But I think it's important for you to know that I had trouble when I was younger treating people that I didn't agree with or that I thought were rude to me. I really wanted to return that kind of favor to them. Well, not a favor, you know what I mean. It was very disrespectful, but I'm glad that I've learned over the years that to let God really work in my life because now I truly try to let the Holy Spirit guide my heart so that I can love God with all my heart and my soul and my mind, and that I can love other people. Now, my middle sister and I, um, we don't, we still don't agree on everything. Um, we lead different lives. We don't get to see each other very often, but I love her very much, and I'm very proud of the woman that she is. I'm proud of the work that she does. I'm proud of her family, and um, I love her just as Jesus wants me to, most of the time. I don't get it right all the time. You know, when other people say unkind things or they argue with us, you really want to argue back with them. When somebody's rude to us, you really want to be rude back to them. And we might even want to show disrespect to the people who make up rules that we don't agree with. We can even get frustrated sometimes on following God's laws when he tells us to love other people. And we'll certainly mess that up somehow. We, we never get everything, right? We're human. And that's why God sent Jesus for us to die on a cross for our sins so that we didn't have to be perfect and we didn't have to give sacrifices to say that we were sorry for the things that we had done. The good news is that when Jesus came, he kept the law perfectly for us. And he died for us to show how much God loves us. Now that is the best gift I could ever imagine. He knew that the greatest gift of all is love. He loved others and he still loves us. He loves us so much. And because of that, we can love God and we can share his love with the people around us no matter what they might do to us even when we get frustrated 
And even when it seems hard to love other people, we can ask God to help us with that. That's one of the ways that I was able to um, start to love my sister better, is that I asked God to give me his love for her. And that helped me be more respectful. And even though we still disagree on a lot of things, it helped me to love her better. So when things seem hard, when it's hard to love other people, remember to ask God to help you. So I started this um, Sunday school lesson talking about doing some things for my mom and dad because I love them. Um, and I'm sure there are things that you do for your mom and dad because you love them. I'm sure that you have chores at home and I'm sure that sometimes it might even get frustrating when your mom or your dad tells you to clean your room or pick up your clothes or help take care of your little brother or sister. Um, and that's frustrating sometimes and maybe we don't want to do it right away but remember that jesus himself said that the two greatest commandments the first one of course is to love god with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind so don't forget that one but that second one is almost as important as the first one and it is to love other people the best way that i know that we can show love for our parents is to do things when they ask us to do them right away so I'm going to challenge you this week um, to really think when your parents ask you to do something, think to yourself, I love God and I love my mom and dad. And because of those two things, I'm going to do this right away to show love for them and to show respect for them. I hope that you're able to do that this week. I hope you're able to get back to school. Um, I'm not sure what the map's going to look like and if we've gone back to Orange here in Upshur County. Um, I'm afraid you won't be able to go to school for another week. Um, and our restart team is going to meet in a couple of weeks to talk about church again. The pandemic has been a very hard time for everyone, but I know that the thing that has gotten me through has been love. Love that other people have shown for me and love that I've been able to reach out and show for other people. So if you feel yourself getting down at any point because you can't hug your friends or because you can't see your grandma and grandpa like you used to, why don't you find something good to do that will show someone else that you love them? Uh, maybe it's to write a note to your grandma and grandpa. We've talked about this before. Maybe it's a, a trip to the grocery store so you can take a bag of groceries to your neighbor that lives next door or down the street or maybe even write a card to Pastor Steve and Martha and let them know that you love them and, you, and that you're thinking about them. We love you so much and we miss you terribly. I hope you're watching um, church on Sunday mornings. I hope you're staying safe and I hope you're staying well. So let's end our Sunday school time together with a prayer. God of love and grace, we are so grateful for you. We're grateful for your word. We're grateful for your commandments. And we're grateful that Jesus himself told us that the greatest commandment is to love you, God, with all of our heart and our soul and our mind. And we also are grateful that he told us that the second important commandment is to love others. God, will you help us to love others better? Would you give us a little bit of a nudge when we're supposed to do something for someone else and remind us that when we show love for other people, that it's also showing love for you. God, we are so grateful for you and grateful that you sent your son Jesus to die for our sins. We lift your name up, dear God, and we praise you today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, folks, like I said before, I miss you very much. I hope everything's going well for you. If you need anything at all, give us a call at the church. We love you and we miss you. Take good care. Bye-bye.